Chapter 25, Electromagnetic Waves. So, oscillating of the charges can produce electromagnetic waves, okay? So if I have a charge and it's oscillating around a fixed or moving point, then that oscillation of the charge, either positive or negative, can create a electromagnetic wave, okay? So um, if, if you're looking at this picture here on part A of it, what we have is that we have point P here, and this point P is oscillating up and down, okay? And uh, at the same time, the background is moving to the right. So if you go to this point, you know, um, and this, this point P is um, oscillating down, but at the same time, the background is moving to the right. Okay, that means that you are, as, you, as this background is moving to the right and you're oscillating, you are making a mark on the, fix, uh, on the background. Your point is fixed. You're not moving um, in the X direction. You're only moving in the Y direction, but your background is moving and you can see the mark that you're making on the background. So in other words, if, if, if the background is moving to the right, if you're going up and down, what you can see is basically this type of form that we call a electromagnetic wave. So once the time starts at the beginning, uh, it will take one full rotational period or capital T to do one complete oscillation or one complete rotation. So about one quarter of the period, you have done one quarter of the length, okay? And then half of the period, you have done half of the job. And then three quarter of the period, you are three quarters away. So all you need to do is to do one, another quarter of the period to get back to where you started. Okay, uh, look at it as this way. You have a um, circle, okay? And then you have, <clears throat> And uh, a particle, okay? You have a particle and you have an X and Y fixed position of X and Y, which I'm just gonna show it like this. So this is my Y and this is my X, okay? So this is X position, X axis, and this is Y axis. And I have a fixed uh, particle right there at the beginning. This particle is a start, will start to rotate around and going in a circular path around this uh, circle, okay? So it'll go up here, then it'll go up here, and then down here, here, and so on, until it goes all the way back to where it starts. So if you consider this, the time to complete to start from this point all the way to 90 degrees will be a quarter of the period. From this point to this point, uh, it will be another quarter, so it will be T over two. From this point to this point, you will pass another quarter, so it will be three T over four. And then when, once you go back to your original position, you have completely one complete full rotation. So the time that passed by is one full period, okay? Now, imagine that you can represent the position of this particle that is moving around the circle in Y axis. So at this point, the projection of this particle in Y axis is this point. At this point, the projection for the for this particle is this point, okay? For this point is here, and it's here. For this point, the projection along the y direction is this. The projection along the y direction is this. And at this point, the projection along the y direction is this point. So if I only consider the y direction, if I only consider the y direction, 
what I can see is that I can see the image of the particle or the projection of the particle going all the way up and so starting from this point going all the way up then coming back down doesn't stop it'll go one more all the way down and then coming back to its original position so it's go, going one up coming back down coming back down again and then going up again back to where it started okay so in other words it will do four of these one it's going up the other one is coming back to uh, zero position and then going down and then coming back to zero position again okay so in one complete rotation you're going up two times and you're going down two times so up up down down all right in other words you're doing it four times and imagine that you are only looking at the projection of this particle along the y direction but the background is moving okay so you are making a mark on the fixed background you're going up and down and then back to where you started but the background is moving at the same time in other words if you're looking at that if you're going up and then down and then going up again you are making one full rotation but if I um, can show it as, as a background is moving to the right then you will see something like this okay so this is called the, the wave or the electromagnetic wave is coming because of the oscillations of uh, charges either positive or negative so um, in the previous image we saw the electric field but there is also a magnetic field being produced and they are both perpendicular to one another and they're also perpendicular to the direction of the motion okay so we have a e field we have a b field and we have a direction of propagation okay which they are all making an angle of 90 degrees with respect to one another okay they're all making an angle of 90 degrees. So E is perpendicular to B and it's perpendicular to V or the perpendicular direction of the uh, motion or propagation, okay? The electric field produced by an antenna connected to an AC generator propagates away from the antenna. Analogous to the wave on the string moving away from your hand as you're wiggling it up and down, okay? So if you want to have a better uh, image of it, that's the that's the image. So you have the E field that's making a wave like that. It's going all the way up and then it's coming back down and it's going all the way up again. And you have a B field, a magnetic field, doing the same but along the Y direction in our case. Okay, in this case, this is the Y and this is the Z. So the B field is also doing the same thing, going all the way up, going back down, and then going all the way up again and they are perpendicular to one another they are making an angle of 90 degrees with respect to one another at each point at each and every single point of this they're always making an angle of 90 degrees if you want to find a direction of propagation or the direction of the velocity because we know that's the that's the direction of the velocity is yes, hope uh, so what you need to do is to do a right hand rule the right hand rule is saying put your four fingers okay four fingers along the direction of the e field and then bend them towards b bend them towards b then your thumb should show you the direction of the propagation in other words you want to find what the e cross b is okay the direction of E cross B, and that will be the direction of propagation. This will help you to get the direction of propagation. Okay. 
So um, we know that it is produced, the electromagnetic field and radiation is produced when a charge accelerates, uh, going all the way up and come back down, and it oscillates, and the charge radiates electromagnetic radiation. It radiates electromagnetic radiation. It does that with the speed of light, three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. This, this speed is huge, this is incredible. It will take only about eight minutes for the light from the sun to get to us. So if, if you are sitting on a uh, beam of light and you want to go from sun to earth, I can see you getting to earth in about eight minutes. Okay, so about eight minutes. In other words, sometimes we refer to, to this as eight, um, eight light minutes. And we'll say that the distance from sun to earth is about eight light minutes. It means that it'll take light with this speed only eight minutes to get to us from sun. This speed is huge enough. It, uh, in other words, if I want to describe it, you can travel eight times around the earth. So you can travel eight times. You can revolve around the earth eight times with this speed in one second. Okay, in one second. You can do that in one second. You can revolve around the earth eight times if you have this much of a speed. So this speed is pretty much constant. The value for this is pretty much constant. Three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second, uh, which is three times 10 to the power of five kilometers per second, or 300,000 kilometers in each second. But this, is, this value is for, um, uh, for the speed of light in vacuum. If you are uh, dealing with anything other than vacuum, then this will be a little bit lower depending on the, the, the substance that you're dealing with. Um, so in order to find the value for C in a substance, other than vacuum, you have to divide the three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second to a value related to, to that constant. Okay, to, uh, to the substance that you're dealing with. So uh, light is an electromagnetic wave. The, the visible light that we, that we see is a electromagnetic wave and it's, uh, it has some features. So the first feature, if you remember from our previous uh, physics class, from uh, uh, physics one, we have something called frequency and it's uh, the number of oscillations per second. Uh, so the number of oscillations or N in uh, time in each second. In other words, the unit for that is one over second or second to the power of negative one, which we call it Hertz or HZ, okay? For example, if you have an electromagnetic wave with a frequency of 10 to the power of five Hertz, that means the source of creating this, this type of wave is doing 10 to the power of five oscillations per second. Okay, we also have something called wavelength and it's the distance from two maximum points, consecutive maximum points or two minimum points. So these are the max points and these are the minimum points. So this is also wavelength. We show that by lambda, okay? Show that by lambda. I'll talk about how this frequency or F and how this lambda are related in a little bit. But let's take a look at uh, the way that they have measured C before. We can measure C using our solar system. The speed of uh, um, you know, light is large enough, and so it's very hard to measure it. So that's why the early uh, measurements of the speed of light happened in early 1600s, using the uh, eclipse of the moons of Jupiter. So, what we have here is that we have this distance, which is the two times of the distance of the sun and the earth, or one AU. It's uh, the distance of one AU is about 93 million miles, okay? 
all right? And then we have the year of the Jupiter. So it's about taking about six months for the, for the Earth to go from this point all the way to this point. So it's half of the year, so six months. The, 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 um, the year of the Jupiter is about 12 years. So one Jupiter year in Jupiter is about 12 Earth year. Okay. In other words, if Jupiter wants to do one complete rotation around the sun, Earth will do 12. Um, and then using that, and we know the distance of these, uh, so we'll, we know the distance that the light will travel from Jupiter at that point all the way to this point, and from Jupiter from at that point all the way to the other end. And we know the, 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 the distance, okay, so we can measure, and we know the time, so we can measure the speed of light using that. The other way of doing this uh, is something called FISU's measurements of C or FISU's measurements of speed of light, uh, which is the first laboratory measurement of the speed of light. And it was done in the um, you know, latter part of the 19th century. So what he did was he was using a ray of light passing through a, uh, a mirror, okay, and uh, he was able to drive the speed of light from the rotational speed of the mirror because this mirror is rotating. And then uh, we know the distance from the mirror to, to the wheel. Uh, and then using this distance and the amount of time for this rotation, because this is doing a rotation, we know what, what a speed it's rotating. Omega is delta theta over delta t. Or if you know the frequency of this rotation, it is 2 pi f. Okay, so based on the, uh, the light that's passing through, either passing through or either not passing, passing through because these are a little bit um, blocking light, right? So we can measure when we, we have the distance, we have the rotation of this, uh, and we can measure the uh, velocity. One very accurate way of uh, measuring the speed of light uh, or C well, it's happened in early, uh, uh, about 1926, if I'm not mistaken. So what happened was that uh, we have a source of light and it, it is shooting light uh, with a speed of C, which we already don't know, but we want to know. And it will be reflected from a mirror. It will go 35 kilometers and it will be reflected from a fixed mirror. And it will travel back at the same time this mirror uh, this rotating mirror is also rotating to some certain amount and the light will be reflected and coming to the observers. So the key is to set the angular speed or omega of this rotating mirror such that it will do one eighth of a way around the, during, around during the time it takes the light to take one complete round trip. So it's going 35 kilometers to the mirror and 35 back or 70 kilometers. And then we determine that the, the speed of light in a vacuum is this much, which is pretty accurate. It is 2.99 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, which is pretty close to what we know for the actual value. So, if we want to know the speed of light in theory, how we can find the speed of light in theory, then the value of the speed of light is given in electromagnetic theory, and it is C is one over square root of epsilon zero mu zero. Epsilon zero was the uh, permittivity of the free space. Mu zero was permeability of the free space, okay? And again, this is a very large um, speed. So in astronomical scale, um, when we're talking about the astronomical scale, we talked about a light year, okay? And the light year is the distance that the light travels in one year. Remember, C was three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second. And each second will travel three times 10 to the power of eight, or three times 10 to the power of five, or 300,000 kilometers per second. Imagine that you're traveling with this speed in one full year, okay? one full year we're traveling with this speed that is called the light year and uh, so that's why in an astronomical scale we usually deal with um, 
the light year as our uh, reference. For example, we say that Andromeda Galaxy, or for example, the, um, the closest star to us is four light years away, meaning that if you travel with the speed of light, it'll take you four years to get there. Uh, so it's a uh, measurement of the distance and not the time. Okay, so as I was just talking about it, like the Andromeda Galaxy, uh, the light from that galaxy will take about two million years to get to us. Okay, um, so it will take the, the same two million years uh, for the light to, to go from us to that galaxy as well. So in other words, if let's say that you're sitting in the class or you're sitting behind your computer and you're watching this video, it will take 2 million years for your light to get to Andromeda Galaxy, okay? And uh, so if, if somebody is sitting in the Andromeda Galaxy and watching Earth, would they be able to see us right now? No, they are seeing us as if we were 2 million years ago. And the two million years ago, the human race were not evolved yet, okay? So um, that's the astronomical scale that we're talking about. The Hubble Space Telescope, the oldest pictures that what we have from the uh, universe or the known universe that we know is about 14 billion years, 13 to 14 billion years old. So that's why we think uh, that the universe is at least 14 billion years old because the oldest light or the furthest light that we have received is 14 billion years old. We also have something called Doppler effect or Doppler shift. The Doppler effect applies to electromagnetic waves as well as the sound waves. So the uh, speed of uh, wave in a vacuum does not change obviously, but it, depending on if the observer or uh, the source is moving with respect to one another, uh, we can feel a different type of frequency. The observed frequency, F prime, is the rest frequency times one plus and minus U over C. This U is the speed of the source speed of uh, source or observer, okay? And if it's going away from you, then you will have plus. If it's going towards you, then you'll have a negative. So depending on which, it, which one it is. So this is going away, this is going towards you. One is positive, the other one is negative. So this one is positive, the other one is negative. Okay, so for example, uh, you have a outgoing radar wave going in this direction and you have a weather system coming towards you with a velocity of V. Uh, but this, this weather system is moving towards you so the returning radar wave can uh, can be analyzed to distinguish the amount of this velocity, the amount of velocity of this weather system, or the other features of this weather system because of the reflection. Um, because at the same time, not only it's reflecting, but it's also moving towards the radar system, so we can distinguish the amount of uh, speed that this has. Okay. So. Um, the changing of the object the spectrum because of the movement can happen um, due to this Doppler effect, okay? The spectrum is changing because the object is moving. Uh, again, this is either the source or the observer, or both at the same time, or both, okay? An object coming towards us is blue shifted, so it's leaning more towards the, sh the blue part of the spectrum, visible part, and the, an object that's moving away from us is redshifted, or it's leaning more towards, or shifted more towards the red part of the spectrum. If you want to know more about the, uh, the Doppler effect and how it's actually uh, observed, please go and watch this um, uh, link. Go to click on this link and uh, copy it to your browser and go watch the experiment. This is a very, very important and it will give you a very good idea of what the Doppler effect is. 
So wavelength and frequency, remember I said that they are all related. So we have lambda, which is the wavelength, and frequency, which is the F. Sometimes in the old notation, they use nu for frequency. Nowadays, they are using uh, little f or curly f uh, to show the frequency. But in old notations, or if you're looking at old physics books, you can see that they are showing it with nu uh, or a notation like that. But lambda, which is the uh, wavelength, is always the same. So this is one wavelength from this point all the way to this point. This is lambda. So if the wavelength is one, then the frequency is uh, 30 gigahertz, okay, for example. And then if, if you reduce the, the wavelength, okay, so the, the number of oscillations would be more because it will be much easier to do one complete. It will be much faster to do one complete oscillations compared to that. So if you reduce the wavelength to half a centimeter, then the frequency is double or you're, you're doing 60 gigahertz. So you're doing double of the time or double of the oscill oscillations. Even if you reduce it a little bit more, let's say that it is 0.25 centimeters. So your wavelength is one over four centimeter, okay? or you're, you have reduced it four times, then your frequency is uh, quadruple, or four times 30, which is 120 gigahertz, okay? Uh, so there is a, 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 a relationship between wavelength and the frequency. In other words, if you multiply them, so wavelength, lambda, frequency, f, if you multiply them, you'll always get the same number, which is always constant, speed of light, three times 10 to the power of eight meters per second, okay? In other words, if your wavelength is reducing or getting smaller, in order to have a same value, in order to have a constant value, you have to have a higher frequency. And this is exactly what's happening here. One times 30 is 30. Half times 60 is 30. One times, one over four times 120 is 30. So if your wavelength is reducing or getting smaller, your frequency should go up in order to have the same value. So regions of the electromagnetic spectrum, and because all electromagnetic waves have the same speed in a vacuum, the relationship, as I just said, between them um, is very simple. So you just multiply the frequency and wavelength and you're getting the same number. Now, the full range of the frequency of the electromagnetic wave is called the electromagnetic spectrum. So, electromagnetic spectrum is the full range of the frequency, all the way from radio to gamma rays. So, radio, microwave, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma rays. Uh, from, if you compare them in the frequency, frequency and the radio is low. So it has a low frequency, 10 to the power of eight, for example, and it will go up as you go towards the gamma ray. But in the wavelength, and the, is the opposite. Radio frequencies are, radio wavelength are high. It's, they are about the uh, size of a football field. They can, they can go all the way up to that. It's 10 to the power of two is 100 meters, right? So they, they can be, be as big as a football field. But as you go from gamma, uh, radio all the way to gamma, you can see that the wavelength is, is, uh, in, is dropping uh, extensively, right? So again, this is the relation. Frequency time lambda would be a constant value, meaning that if your frequency is going up, in order to have a constant value here, your lambda should go down. So if I have a high frequency for radio, for example, or if, if I have a low, um, a high frequency for gamma rays, then it should have a low wavelength. So this is high, this is low. Okay, in order to get the same number for C or a constant number. So this is just an example of the things that we were talking about, starting from gamma ray, low frequency, uh, high frequency, going all the way to radio in the low frequency. And this radio has a, a huge lambda, okay? Compared to lambda here, for example. 
all right? So um, the hydrogen atom is about the size of the, uh, the, uh, the X-ray, so size of a wavelength. And then as you go all the way to the radio, the frequency of the, the wavelength of the radio waves could go all the way to the size of a football field, which is about 100 meters. And as you go uh, from gamma all the way to radio, your frequency will drop. Frequency is very high here. You can see that there are a lot of oscillations here in one second versus here there are just a few oscillations. So the frequency is higher around the gamma compared to radio. And the energy has a direct proportionality or it's directly proportioned to uh, the frequency. The higher frequency, the higher the energy. So in other words, if I want to show it, the energy is H, which is a constant, I'll get to that, what the value for that is, times the frequency, okay? That's the energy, that's the frequency, that's the Planck constant. So if you have a high, that is a constant number. Okay? So if you have a high frequency, then you're getting a high energy. So that's why a high frequency can have a high energy, okay? So let's just compare the, uh, you know, different sources on Earth. Uh, so radioactive elements will have that much of the energy. X-ray machines will have this much of the energy around the X-ray, as we know. Light bulb is around the um, visible part of the spectrum because it's obviously visible. People will uh, have the energy that it's propagating in the infrared part of the wavelength. And then we have radar and microwave uh, part of the spectrum happening inside the, uh, between infrared and radio. And then at the end we have a radio transmitter uh, which, uh, you know, function in the radio part of the spectrum. Okay, so let's take a look at this. As I said, if you multiply the lambda and frequency, you'll get always a constant number. Okay, and so lambda is wavelength, f is frequency, and uh, this is the speed of light. For the energy, you have h times the frequency. h is the Planck constant, 6.62 .6 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times second, it is the photon energy, and we know that um, light is a photon, right? So that's how you can find the energy of those, and that's how you can find the relationship between frequency and wavelength. So these are some of the uh, definitions of each. Um, so radio waves are the lowest frequency electromagnetic wave that we find useful. Radio and television broadcast are in the range of 10 to the power of 6 to 10 power of, to the power of 9 hertz. Uh, as we know, long wavelength, less energy. So long wavelength, wavelength, less energy, and lowest of frequency. Remember this ratio. Lambda times the frequency is always a constant number, which is C, which is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. And E, which is the energy, is Planck constant, which is a constant value all the times, times the frequency. Microwaves are used for cooking and also for telecommunications. Microwave frequencies are 10 to the power of 9 to 10 to the power of 12 hertz. Uh, with wavelengths from 1 millimeter to 30 centimeters, uh, they are produced by oscillating of vibration electrons. So let's take a look at this thought question. Um, a higher the, the photon energy, if you have a, a photon energy that's high, so this E, which is H nu, we have a very high photon energy. That means you have a, uh, a longer the wavelength, the shorter the wavelength, and the energy is independent of the wavelength. So what I can do here is that I can write E is h time f, so h is a constant. That means if I have a high energy, I should have a high frequency. But I, at the same time, know that frequency times lambda should be a constant number. So if I have a high frequency, I should have a low number for lambda in order to get a constant value. So the lambda should be small. 
So that's why the answer is the shorter its wavelength. So the wavelength should be short, okay, because you have a high frequency, okay? Wavelength should be short. So let's take a look at the infrared wavelength. Infrared waves are felt as heat by human. Uh, we have infrared cameras. Uh, military use infrared cameras all the time. Remote controls operate using infrared radiations. The frequencies are about 10 to the power of 12 hertz to 4.3, 10 to the 14 hertz. And the wavelength range is seven times 10 to the negative seven meters to 10 uh, or one times 10 to the negative uh, three meters, which is about a millimeter. And it is, uh, the reason that we see this is because we, have, we see that the, it's produced by the molecular excitations, either excitations towards the rotational uh, energy or translational energy but they excite, okay? Visible light has a fairly narrow frequency range. It's about 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And this it's the part of the uh, electromagnetic wave that our um, human's eyes are sensitive to. In other words, we can see them better. And ultraviolet light, uh, and it starts uh, just above those of a visible light, so it's about 7.5 uh, times to the 14 hertz to, uh, you know, times uh, 10 times 10 to the power of 17 hertz, or about lambda between 10 to the negative 8 meters to 7 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. So these rays are very harmful, okay? They can burn, they can cause skin cancer. So that's why with uh, with uh, humans that are, you know, uh, killing the ozone layer in our atmosphere, we're getting more and more ultraviolet light. And I always recommend to my students, do not go and take for a long time a sun bath. Uh, do not lie in, under the sun because we do not have that layer of protection anymore. So this could cause a skin cancer in, in the future. So some insects can see in ultraviolet uh, light only, and some flowers will have some special marking on their body uh, that's only visible under the ultraviolet light. Uh, they are also caused by the excitation of atoms. X-ray and gamma rays. X-rays have a higher frequency still, about 10 to the 17 to 1020 hertz. And the lambda of that is ten, about between 10 to the negative 11 to 10 to the negative eight meters. They are used for the medical imaging. Gamma rays have the highest frequency of all. So as, as you remember, high frequency means high energy, okay? Above 10 to the 20 Hertz, okay? Or the source that's producing those will do 10 to the 20 oscillations in each second. So 10 to the 20, Hertz means 10 to the power of 20 oscillations in one second, okay? And the wavelength of those is uh, less than 10 to the negative 11, so it's very small. These rays are extremely energetic, as we know that, and are produced by nuclear reactions. They are destructive to living cells and are therefore used to destroy cancer cells and uh, you know, sterilized foods. So um, the energy and the momentum of the electromagnetic wave, this is, uh, we're gonna go to that in part two of the video. So stay tuned, uh, we'll directly go to, uh, to part two of the video. This is the end of part one, I'll talk to you guys soon.